Hello there. Additive manufacturing or 3D printing has long been hailed as a revolutionary transformational application for medicine, printing body parts, organic material, and so on. But the fact is, it has yet to live up to that promise. Now, Professor Ricky Wildman from the University of Nottingham Centre for Additive Manufacturing hopes to change all that. Professor Wildman, a warm welcome to you. Why has this hoped for, perhaps longed for revolution taken so long to manifest itself? Hi, Nick. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So what we found talking to a lot of our industry partners and collaborators is that there's a lot of interest and excitement around 3D printing. But when it comes to it, many people don't really understand how they go from the product idea to actually realizing the product in practice. And so this means what materials, where to put them, what shape to make them, how to incorporate all that into, into a product. And what we're trying to do is make that process a lot simpler and a lot easier. And we're trying to make a toolkit that will put all the steps of the process and simplify all the steps of the process, uh, hopefully into a almost like a one button, press the button and out pops a solution. Um, uh, kind of uh, kind of deal. Does that mean we're talking about the day coming when hospitals themselves will be using additive manufacturing in situ, or will it still be very much a, a sort of outsourced process? Well, hospitals do use a little bit of 3D printing at the moment for prosthetics or for models to help surgeons practice. Uh, before they go and do the surgery. But what we're hoping for is the more sophisticated, more advanced products will be realized through this through this, this kind of toolkit. It's very difficult once you get into that advanced biotechnology or healthcare technology devices or therapeutics to, to really be able to design and, and create these structures uh, in a simple way. And, and it's difficult, certainly in a hospital, to have an environment that does that. So what we're, what we're doing is generating the environment, generating the platforms that will in five to 10 years enable industry to develop the products that will ultimately lead to, uh, to clinical use. So you've been given a, a £6 million grant by the uh, EPSRC, implying that this is a UK phenomenon. But hmm. do you have any knowledge of whether this is... Uh, an international phenomenon? I mean, is this something that maybe even has export potential? Well, well absolutely. It's uh, funded by EPSRC, uh, government funding through UKR, uh, UKRI. It's, um, it's been noted as a UK uh, area of national importance, research really vital to be able to get manufacturing into, uh, into use, uh, particularly these advanced technologies around additive manufacturing. But uh, additive manufacturing has uh, you know, worldwide application. As part of this project, we've got a lot of industry members as part of our consortium, but not only UK, but international uh, industry partners and also international academic collaborators, really representing uh, the worldwide excitement and need for this kind of uh, technology uh, for, for these kinds of advanced products that we're, we're envisaging. That, that rather implies that uh, you at the University of Nottingham are, are, are sitting pretty much at the pinnacle of, of a lot of this technology. I know you've got a, a very large staff there and use very advanced technology. Uh, you must be feeling quite excited by all of this. Uh, yeah, absolutely excited. It's, it's a great, it's a great um, time for us at Nottingham, but we have uh, excellent collaborators at different universities. This project is a collaboration between Nottingham as the lead, but Cambridge, Reading and Strathclyde. And of course, it's important to know there are other pockets of excellence within the UK. But yeah, we're really pleased to be you know, at this point at the forefront of additive manufacturing research in the UK uh, and worldwide. You, you know, UK sits sits in the lead worldwide uh, in this kind of advanced manufacturing technology. You, you talked about a, a sort of five to ten year time frame before this becomes almost routine. What 
kind of technologies, what kind of treatments do you, do you foresee? And I know that obviously new things that you don't even know about will be developed in time. But what do you foresee uh, from this standpoint as, as being something that will be routinely available? Yeah, so the primary aim of the project is to build this toolkit, this sort of recipe or uh, workflow that's going to help industry put products in place. But to help us do that, we've uh, identified three products that uh, really can drive this toolkit, really make us understand the challenges associated with how do you realize a product. Uh, the, the examples, the exemplars that we've chosen are an intestinal patch, a really complex, sophisticated product involving cells and materials that would be implanted in, into the intestine to, to help uh, sufferers of, uh, for example, Crohn's disease or intestinal bowel disease. Another example is a biopill, being able to deliver biologics, proteins, peptides, oligonucleotides uh, in an oral form. So imagine if we didn't have to use uh, injection for vaccines, that we could swallow a pill, how much easier it would have been in the pandemic to, to, to roll out these vaccines. That's, gonna, that's going to make us, uh, that's going to guide us in the toolkit. And then once we have the toolkit for the second half of the project, the idea is that you know, fresh ideas will come in. We'll have the toolkit that, as you say, we'll be able to start thinking about products that we couldn't, we, you know, we couldn't imagine at the start of the project that we'd be able to deliver. I imagine the medical community must be very turned on by all this and be welcoming it with open arms. Oh, very excited. Uh, you know, we have a number of partners in the project, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, GSK, Syngenta, all companies really associated with uh, with with drugs or, or agrochemicals, and these uh, uh, they tell us how excited they are by three D printing and and the kind of opportunities that three D printing uh, will allow them if if we make it easier for them to to adopt it. Well, Professor Wildman, thank you very much. I wish you and your team all the very best of luck. It seems like a very bright future ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. This has been a special report from Manufacturing TV. I'm Nick Peters. Thank you for watching.